Here we begin our discussion of the kingdom fungi. And the fungi represent a monophyletic crown eukaryote kingdom. And the crown eukaryotes are plants, animals, and fungi. Uh, and as far as kingdoms go, uh, these three kingdoms really are what were originally intended for as kingdoms and which best fit our idea of what a kingdom should be. Uh, protists, it's difficult to describe them as a single kingdom anymore. Uh, and bacteria and archaea, as we saw, they are probably many different kingdoms. What makes a kingdom in those groups, it's not as easy to say. But with the fungi, plants, and animals, we can say uh, exactly what a kingdom is and whether an organism is a member of that kingdom or not. So here you have uh, a mushroom. Uh, Ammonita muscaria is the name of this particular uh, mushroom. And I show it to you here uh, to tell you about mycology. And mycology is the study of fungi. And the reason uh, that we call people who study fungi mycologists is uh, because of that myco word root, which comes to us from the Greek word that means cap. And the original fungi that uh, people were aware of were mushroom-forming fungi, which had these caps on them, which looked uh, like caps that people in Greece wore. So that's how we get mycology as the study of fungi. And you're going to see that myco word root a lot. So what defines fungi as a monophyletic kingdom? Uh, as with many other good taxa, we look for shared derived characteristics. Uh, being, eukaryote, uh, being a eukaryote is not really one of those shared-derived characteristics. It's an ancestral characteristic shared by uh, all of the protists and the plants and the animals. So we need to look at other things, such as uh, how do they feed? Uh, fungi are heterotrophic, as are animals, but unlike animals, fungi are heterotrophic by means of assimilation. And what that means is they don't really have a mouth, per se, or a specialized part of their body that is for feeding. But the entire organism can feed uh, anywhere along its body by secreting enzymes that start to digest the substrate, whatever it's growing on, and bring those uh, digested macromolecules through the cell wall into the body. So very different from uh, the way that you or I or any other animal may eat. Uh, fungi also have cell walls. Uh, their cell walls are made of a uh, polysaccharide called chitin. And chitin is uh, a polymer made up of units called N-acetylglucosamine. And that's something that we find in almost all of the fungi. Fungi uh, also reproduce by spores, similar to what we saw in plants with their sporic meiosis. Uh, but the spores in fungi uh, may be derived from meiosis, in which case those are sexually derived spores, or they can be derived from mitosis, and they, we say that those are asexually derived uh, spores. And the life cycle of fungi is zygotic meiosis, so they're predominantly haploid organisms, uh, where the zygote, once it's formed, is going to undergo meiosis. Uh, but there is a little bit of a modification from simply saying that they are haploid organisms. And I'll talk about that a little bit later on uh, when we're talking about the different uh, phyla of fungi. As far as a body plan, uh, fungi can, are, can be single cell, they can be unicellular, or they can be truly multicellular, or they can be colonial. Uh, and when they are multicellular, they're typically found in a filamentous form. So they look like a series of threads under the microscope. So the filamentous forms uh, may be arranged uh, as a singular hypha, which is just one tiny thread of a fungus. Or when you have many of them, you can call them hyphae. Uh, if you have a lot of hyphae altogether, they can form a structure called a mycelium. And a mycelium is typically large enough that you can see it with the naked eye. Uh, and if you have many mycelia growing on a culture plate, for example, that's how we uh, pluralize that word. 
They can also exist as uh, single-celled organisms. You are probably familiar with a single-celled fungus uh, in the form of yeast, like baker's yeast or brewer's yeast. Uh, those two yeasts are actually one species, uh, just called something different depending on what the application is. But uh, yeast is sort of a generic and not a taxonomic term for a single-celled fungus. Uh, some species have both single-celled and filamentous forms. Like we see in other kingdoms, there are a number of evolutionary trends uh, that we see throughout the kingdom of fungi. The most ancestral lineages of fungi retain that single posterior flagellum that identifies them as being members of the Uniconta. Uh, remember, Uniconta includes, includes uh, coanoflagellates and it includes uh, myxogastrida uh, and animals. And the reason that they're called uniconts is because they have that single flagellum. Uh, and in the case of animals and fungi, when they have that single flagellum, it is pointed in the posterior direction. So they swim uh, in the direction opposite where the flagellum is located. So think of a like a sperm cell swimming to try and find an egg, and that gives you an example of what a posterior flagellum is. In most fungi, they have lost those flagella, so they don't really swim anymore. Uh, in the ancestral lineages of fungi, uh, the three lower phyla of fungi, the hyphae are cenocytic, which means that there are no cross walls or septations between the nuclei, which means the hyphae are just collections of nuclei that can interact with each other, and they're all going to be expressing uh, genes, uh, transcribing genes, and uh, there's, no, there's nothing uh, telling a nucleus it can't transcribe whatever genes it is genetically destined to do. But in the more derived lineages of fungi, the hyphae become septate, or they become cross walls between nuclei. They're much more uh, arranged, carefully arranged. Uh, and tying into that, the ancestral lineages of fungi are microscopic, and you've probably never heard of them before, uh, because they're not something you would encounter on a daily basis, unless you were looking through a microscope or actually trying to find these guys. Whereas most of the fungi that you are familiar with, things like mushrooms and maybe uh, yeast, if you buy a packet of yeast from the store because you want to make some bread or something, are macroscopic. You can see them uh, with the naked eye. And we'll get into why that is as we talk about the diversity of fungi later on. Niches. So where do we find fungi? Well, they're all heterotrophic, as are all members of the Uniconta, so they can't photosynthesize on their own. They need other organisms to feed upon. So often, um, fungi are most famous for being decomposers, for breaking down mainly plant material. Uh, they're not as great at breaking down uh, animal tissue. Uh, that's, uh, there are other types of organisms that are better at that. Uh, and they're really good at breaking down wood. Wood is a really tough substance for uh, organisms to degrade because lignin and cellulose are some very recalcitrant or difficult to break down uh, polymers. But fungi have the tools, the, the enzymes in their toolboxes, to do it. Uh, many fungi are pathogenic. There are a few important animal and uh, human pathogens that are out there, but by and large, uh, most fungi are plant pathogens, and most of the plant pathogens that we know of are fungi. So yes, your plants can get sick uh, if they become infected by fungi. But they're not all bad. Uh, they uh, also are engaged in some mutualistic symbioses. So they can partner up with different phototrophic organisms that uh, can, they, they can share um, habitat with them and exchange uh, important 
resources. So lichens are one example of a mutualistic symbiosis that fungi undergo. And mycorrhizas are uh, mutualistic symbioses that fungi perform with plants in the plant kingdom. And uh, we'll talk a little more about them as we get into the diversity of fungi. As far as the groups of fungi, we've got five phyla, uh, pretty well supported phyla. Catridiomycota is, is, a, is considered a phylum, although it's uh, polyphyletic. We've got the zygomycota, the glomeromycota, the ascomycota, and the basidiomycota. And you'll see all of these have that uh, word root mycota in them, which, as I mentioned, means cap and refers to all things fungal. In addition, we've got a couple of grades or groups of fungi that don't represent uh, or uh, groups based on shared common ancestry but are polyphyletic, things like imperfect fungi and lichenized fungi. And we'll talk more about that as we go on to. So I know I'm just leaving a lot of cliffhangers out there, but we'll get to it all. And one of the things that really uh, demonstrates a lot of diversity in fungi is when you look at the spores of fungi. There's an amazing diversity of spores out there uh, that keep mycologists like myself entertained. So that's our overview of fungi, and next we'll start marching through some of those uh, diverse phyla that I mentioned.